What wanted to touch on uh, on trading, uh, Brian. Uh, it, it's down uh, relative to, to a year ago, and, and clearly that, that was off some extraordinary uh, highs. But perhaps it's down less than people expected. And, and I guess my question is, uh, in two, three, four quarters' time, when we are definitely past the pandemic-related uh, activity, do you think we go back to, to the levels of pre-pandemic, or has there been a sort of structural improvement in trading, particularly for the big U.S. players and, and market share gains that, that will continue uh, into the more medium and long term. So I, I think two things. One, the amount of volatility you know, last year, as you said, was sort of unbelievable as we were going through all the stress of the crisis and helping people get to the market, et cetera. But behind that, though, there's a fundamental uh, market shift in terms of market shares that have moved towards us uh, and the other large players because of compensating skills and the cost of investment that you have to make in these platforms every year, the electronification, the fixed income market, you, you name it. And so we've seen that share grow. And so we're pretty comfortable that we've been watching this build up to sort of fundamental new platforms. And one of the things that we talked about last quarter, not so much this quarter, was our initiative to let the market's business push to be back to be the same size relative to the company it was uh, earlier. It's just the company is growing around it. So we're going to put some more capital work. It's a good opportunity. It's a fundamental market share. But will there be less volatility? Yeah, because it, you know, versus last year, because it was just outsized due to the, what was going on in the markets, and we're watching that come back through. Brian, we, we have an interview coming up with ARK Invest's Kathy Wood later in the show, and I, I'm sure fintech is a topic. Well, it, it certainly will come up uh, w with her. Do, do you sometimes lament when fintech companies get heralded and, and, and old banks don't get included in that? You talked on the call today about some of the stunning numbers you have uh, in growth for, for your digital products and Zelle included. Are you a fintech company? We, we are a technology company. We're basically huge, capable uh, technology platforms, wonderful people to serve the clients, and then the buildings to make it all operate. And so it, we are completely a technology company and have been for years. We have 40 and a half million active digital customers just in the consumer business alone. They, I think last month it was 900 million times they engaged with us. You know, so that's been growing at you know, 25, 30 percent a year, the amount of engagement. The usage of the stuff has gone up. But what we saw during the pandemic was, frankly, that driving through our wealth management businesses, which is the biggest and best business in the world, driving into our commercial businesses because of necessity. And that is not going back at all. It's going forward and growing even faster. So all segments of customers and consumer, older people, younger people, wealthy people, not so wealthy people, all using this platform. And then we can use it to help them, the fraud protection and other things we do. So it is a wonderful platform, tons of engagement. And, you know, our Merrill Edge product is $300 billion and is growing uh, 25, 30 percent year over year. Our, you know, life plans, 4 million life plans, the product's only been out a year, I think, or something like that. You know, these are numbers, Zell, you know, 17 million, Erica, to, you know, 19 million, Zell, 14 million, Erica, 19 million. These are just stunning amounts of activity. But what it really does allows us to make the company better for customers and better for, in terms of operations, allows us to keep, the, keep making the company better and investing more because the, of the cost dynamic of all that. A, a tech company, Brian, uh, in the finance space, but not quite getting the earnings uh, uh, multiple as, as some of uh, Kathy's, <laughs> Kathy's companies, of course. But that, that is always the case. I um, wanted to pivot as well. well I'd, rather um, make to, the money. To... I'd rather make the money, Wolf. And so $9 billion in earnings is a good day. So. Well, that's a good point. I mean, do you think some of those companies are a bit stretched on the valuation? Will they all succeed to, to grow into the valuations they have? I think that's the age-old question, and you'll see it play out uh, based on the better ones. Or not. So it'll, you'll see it play out, just like you see it play out with banks over the years, and you saw it play out with the dot-com companies. There are great companies out there and great ideas. We study them all to figure out what they're doing for the customers. Is it something we should be doing? We also research heavily with our customers to stay ahead of it. We, we're the number one bank mm -hmm. in online and mobile as by almost all the different things, and it's growing very fast. So our job is to stay with the customer, not ahead of the customers, and drive the usage and activity, because that's what actually drives the earnings of the company. Our deposit uh, cost, so taking our retail phones and everything uh, in the consumer business, has, has gone from 300 basis points to 120 basis points over the last you know, several years because of that digital effectiveness, and that's what we shoot for. Mm -hmm. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.